Welcome to Tech in the Car. In this video, I'm going to show you around the new Golf Mark 8. I borrowed this car from Volkswagen in Eastbourne, and if you're after an amazing car from VW, pay them a visit. So let's have a look around the car, discuss its features, what it does, and show you the technology. Let's talk a bit about the history of the Golf. It's been around for about 45 years. The first model came out, the Mark 1, in 1974, and since then over 35 million Golfs have been sold around the world. The Mark 7 came out in 2012, and this newest version, the Mark 8, was announced and shown off last year, and is now starting to come into showrooms for people to buy. So this is the new VW Golf Mark 8, as you can see, and it's got a very similar design to the last generation, but it has had some major changes. The technology in the car is a massive difference, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But just looking at it from the rear, it's got new LED tail lights. It's got a new design at the back with the Volkswagen logo, and the Golf just under it. Let's talk a bit about the trims. The entry level is called the Golf by itself. Then the next model up is called the Life, then Style, and then you get the really sporty R-Line, and of course, the GTI and GTD are becoming available now as well. And I imagine there'll be a Golf R as well, which I used to have one of those at some point soon as well. Let's talk about the engines. There's a 1.5 litre turbo petrol with 130 or 150 horsepower. There's a two litre diesel with 115 or 150 horsepower. There's a plug-in hybrid with a 1.4 litre turbo petrol engine with an electric motor that can drive 60 kilometers on electric alone. And you have a choice of either 204 horsepower or 245 in the GTE. And there's also a one litre version with a 90 or 110 horsepower engine. And the one litre with auto or the 1.5 DSG use mild hybrid technology for better efficiency. And don't forget the GTI, which has a 245 horsepower. How about some of the design features? So the new Golf has a flat design VW badge, which is where the sensors for the adaptive cruise control exist, and which allows a very advanced driving capabilities, which we're gonna go into in a little bit. On the front, you have new LED headlights, and you can also option them with matrix LED headlights. You can see the new rear bumper design here with a diffuser. There's no fake exhaust there. It's an all-in-one and nicely designed bumper, and it's definitely much more prominent with the new design slimline LED lights and the new Golf design and logo. And you can see there that it still looks like a Golf, but it's got a new modern up-to-date design, which is very interesting to look at. This particular model is a 1.5 litre life model. There's plenty of space in the interior, just like you would expect from a Golf. The door bins are lined by felt, as you come to expect from a Golf. This is the key. Let's have a look at the infotainment now. So this is the main driver's display, as you can see. It's got a green design to it and I can swap through with the view button, the various different settings. So I can go into the display which shows the gear and the speed and the driver assistance systems, which you would have seen when I was doing the driving video. And I can scroll through again to get to the map view and I can change bits of information. I can zoom in, I can zoom out and I can change various bits of information. I can change the gear indicator. I can change the fuel gauge. I can have the assistance systems, the operating temperatures settings so there's a lot of control here over what you can show and what you want to show in the center driver's dashboard and obviously underneath at the bottom there you can see the auto hold the parking the various information about the car the, the distance of the fuel remaining so you have all this information inside a digital cluster but it's all easy to see and easy to get to this is the inner vision 10 inch main touch screen and this gives you access to all of your in-car infotainment systems i just plugged my iphone in so it's going to ask me if i want to use carplay this car has wireless carplay which means that i don't actually need to have my phone plugged in so right now if i go back to the main menu right now it is plugged in as you will see however if i unplug it carplay will remain on.
and it's very easy to access it. When you first connect CarPlay to the system, it will ask you if you want to enable wireless CarPlay. You click on yes, you click on allow, and then you have access to it. And then when you unplug it for the first time, it will double check with you as you just saw on the screen that you want to allow wireless CarPlay, and then you have it. And then you have this beautiful display in front of you where you can see everything that you want to about CarPlay. You can open up Google Maps, just like you obviously have the car's inbuilt navigation, you have Google Maps, and you can see how beautiful the display looks on here. The Volkswagen is, system is adding everything you could want in terms of the size of the display. You can see it's high resolution, it's high detail. I can move it around and adjust its position. It's just beautiful to look at. I can change the view to satellite view and you have this beautiful satellite view and I can zoom in and move around very easily. And then I can go back to the main dashboard in Apple CarPlay, which looks very similar to the Volkswagen dashboard when I removed it before it was plugged in, showing me my music and how long it will take me to get home and various bits of information. I can go into my settings on the new version of iOS. And that's what CarPlay looks like on the BW Innovation system on the Golf Mark 8. So it's a really beautiful, high resolution, high quality display. Welcome to the 10 inch Innovision display cockpit. That's what you can see in front of you here. This is the overview of the infotainment system. I can go into the telephone and I can see my contacts. I can see my calls. I can see any messages. It's very easy to understand and use. I can go into the radio and media. I can choose between my media or Bluetooth. I can go up into radio and I can turn the volume down by swiping my finger along here. It's got touch sensitive controls, or of course I can use the steering wheel buttons here and here to turn the volume up and down manually. If I go out of here now, you can see the next setting is navigation. This is showing me that I'm 13 minutes away from Eastbourne. It will let me search for areas, points of interest in the area. It will show me an overview of the map so I can see where I am exactly. This green button is a home button which allows you to go backwards and forwards. I can then go into my vehicle settings and this will show me the interior and exterior vehicle settings so I can see when my service is due. I can see if my start stop system is on or off. Start stop is designed to save you fuel. So when you're in traffic, it will bring you to a stop and turn the engine off and it will automatically restart. And of course I can see my fuel economy, how many miles I've driven, how long it is until I run out of fuel. I can see the short term, long term, or since refuel. There's nothing new about the way this works, but the way that the VW Mark 8 Golf is showing it is really simple, really beautiful, very easy to understand and find. It's a very intuitive system. If I want to connect my phone, I can use App Connect. This car has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. What are those? CarPlay is a system which allows you to connect your iPhone and Android Auto allows you to connect an Android phone such as Samsung or Sony or a Google phone. So this is what Android Auto looks like on the Golf 8. So it's important to understand the point of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, depending on what phone you have, whether it's a Samsung or a Sony or a Google phone, it will run Android. Android is made by Google or whether it's an Apple phone, an iPhone. And they both have their way of getting this information from your phone up into the middle of the screen so you can get that data from your phone. So you can see your contacts, you can see your music, you can go through your phone much easier, much more efficiently. This is Android Auto. This is using Google Maps. And I can zoom in and move it around because it's Google Maps. I can tap on the home button and it'll take me to an overview of all of my apps, which I can then go through and choose between. And also because of that, you can talk to Google. Where is the nearest Starbucks? Here's what I found for where is the nearest Starbucks. So having Google Maps is great. You can see your notifications if you have any or not. And then you can go back to your music and you can listen to it through YouTube. And then you can tap on this to go back. So that's if you have an Android phone. If you have an iPhone, check the other part of this video. Yeah. 
if I swipe through again, you can see my phone settings, and this will take me back to the phone information if I want to. I can also see my fuel economy and my car performance details since start. So I can see I've got 450 miles of range. I can see how long I've driven for, the average speed. In the long term, I can see the total number of miles. This information is all available for you probably in your current car, but the way it's been redesigned and focused by VW in a really easy to find simple way is what's outstanding about this. We then have background, which lets me change the mood and I can change the mood to infinity and it will change as you can see the colors on the dashboard, you adjust the colors. So you can't see the ambient lighting, but there is ambient lighting here and you can adjust the colors and you can go through them and make them into whatever you want. And there's over 30 different choices with ambient colors. So that is an overview of the systems. You'll also notice some buttons. So there are buttons here. There's a power button, which will allow you to turn it on and off. There are heat control buttons. So if you want to turn the heating up and down and you can also tap on the button underneath, there's an assist button, a climate button and a menu button. If I press the climate button, you get through to the air conditioning. I can turn it on and off and I can adjust the temperature by just swiping my finger up and down here like this or on the other side if I want to. Very easy to use and I can adjust the fan speed as well like this. So super simple to use. I can also turn the seat heating on and off at the start of the journey. Go back to turning it off. The assist features, if I press on the assist features, this is the driving assistance menu controls and it shows you the various systems that are available to you. So the adaptive cruise control and the front assist. So front assist, when somebody brakes, it will automatically detect and slow it down for you to stop you from having an accident. It will also, as you see, it also lets you adjust the distance from the car in front. When it will emergency brakes, it will it be early? So as soon as it sees something, it automatically does it. Or will it be more late? Or you can turn it off if you don't want that safety feature. It will display the distance and it also has swerve support as well. I can go into the adaptive cruise control settings and I can adjust those with sport, economy, comfort, normal. So just depending on how far ahead I want the other car to be and how aggressively I want the car to accelerate when there is a gap. And it has a road recognition, which you saw when I was driving, which showed you when you were going around the corners and it showed you the speed limit as well. And this is just a really nice, easy to see way of seeing your various settings. This is a lane keeping assist and is active and it will keep you in lane. And if you start to swerve, it will give you a vibration to the steering wheel. And you can of course turn that on and off very easily. And then the last assistant system on here is a driver alert system. If you start to fall asleep, it will keep you awake and let you know. And lastly, dynamic road sign display. You can make it so if you go over the speed limit, it will warn you visually or audibly, and you can adjust the amount of speed over that it will give you that warning. So it's a really easy to see overview of what you want there, whether it's the speed, limit, whether it's the adaptive cruise control, whether it's the front assist system, whether it's the um, warnings for when you get tired, it's all there and it's really easy to see. I can also bring up the notifications by hitting the little number there. As you can see, if I tap the little number, it will let me go into the notifications and I can delete them all like this. So it's very simple to do. And this is an overview and list of all of those settings. A couple of other things to note about the car. There are two USB type C connectors down here, which modern phones use all the time. And it also has wireless charging. So you can put your phone down into here and it will wirelessly charge, which is a really good feature to have and to know. In terms of the steering wheel, it's as you would expect. On some models, the buttons are touch sensitive. On this car, they're not, but you have the volume up and down button. You have the button to turn on the adaptive cruise control and set the speeds up and down or set the speed limiter. There is also a quick button to the assistant settings on the steering wheel, as well as voice control and the ability to change the various display options of the cockpit. 
I'm driving the Golf Mark 8 and it feels like a Golf to drive. It feels very much like the previous generation in terms of comfort and ride and quality. Uh, you know, holding the steering wheel, everything feels really, really good quality. And then you've got this fantastic new display in front, which has got a digital driver's display and also the massive touchscreen in the middle, which is a huge step up from the previous generation of Golf. And to be fair, compared to lots of cars as well. This new center screen is a big improvement over other cars. It's really high resolution, very clear, very easy to see. It's divided up into sections and you can see the maps, you can see your media, you can see your car status, and you can see everything that you need to see. It's just a much, much more enjoyable place to be with more controls in front of your face, allowing you to see more of what's going on. This Golf Mark 8 has the new driver assistant options, which include lane assist and adaptive cruise control. I'm using them now, and as you can see on my dash here, you can see it can see the car in front, it can see how far it is to the car in front. And on the right hand side, you can see dotted line saying that's the center of the road. And on the left, you can see it's a straight line indicating the side of the road. And as I move, the car will be aware of where we are in relation to what's going on around us. It also knows the speed limit as well. And you can see it's very much aware of where I am and what I'm doing. It's telling me there's a bend ahead, so it's using is satellite navigation information to tell me what's ahead of me and to prepare me for that and warn me about that and also telling me what the speed limit should be in those corners and now it's telling me there's a junction ahead as well so it's giving me a lot of really useful information which you wouldn't necessarily get from any other cars i certainly haven't seen that on other cars myself and it's letting you know the speed limit and it's reading the road signs as well. So if there is road works or if there's some other hazard, it will show it up on the screen as well. And again, it's still in adaptive cruise. It's still telling me lane assist is on. And it's just very, very easy to drive. And you feel very confident that you know where the car is in the road. You can see what the assistant features are doing. And this makes a big difference. If you're driving and you're tired, or if you're in stop-start traffic, having the ability to be able to use these lane assist features, to use these adaptive cruise control features for the car to essentially almost drive itself, is a huge step up from traditional cars. It makes it much more relaxing, it makes it a lot easier. And then when you take into consideration the fact that this is an automatic in this particular car, there are manual variants available, but with an automatic car, it makes it much, much easier as well because you don't have to worry about changing gears. The car's automatically slowing down. It can see the car in front. It can see the car behind. It's doing everything for me. And that's really what you want in a car with modern technology. You want the driving when you're not out there to have fun, to be doing it all for you, to keep you safe. Because safety nowadays is really important. We want to be safe in our cars. We want to know that our cars have the technology to keep us safe. And having that in this Golf 8 is a really, really great feature. It definitely gives me a sense of comfort and safety that I haven't got in other cars. As you can see here, it's telling me with the road signs that there's another, there was a junction ahead. Uh, that's now vanished, but it was there, so it told me about that, and that was reading off the road signs. And I love this ability to be able to place where exactly you are in the road. I think that's a really cool feature. To know I'm here, this is where I am, and to see it ahead. And the design too is very, very modern, very easy to see. It's got these interesting shades, so you can appreciate in this position what mode I'm in. I'm in drive, you can see the speed I'm going at, you can see the gear, I can see the speed. It's very simple, you can see how far it is to the car in front. And of course you can adjust the distance as well. If you set it, you press the set button, and press the plus and minus, you can adjust the distance of the car in front, so you don't have to be too close to a car if you're in fast moving traffic or slow moving traffic and you want to actually slow down a bit. And you can see how the infotainment system shows you when you're reversing the information you need. And this 1.5 litre engine feels like it's got 
get up and go. It doesn't feel by any means like uh, you'd have trouble in traffic with uh, anything happening. It feels very much like uh, you would be fine if you needed to uh, overtake or if you need to speed up in, in, in traffic for any reason. And I can swap through the views on the infotainment system so we can see the map view now. You can see we're going back to more traditional dials view. I hope you enjoyed this video about the Golf Mark 8 and you've enjoyed seeing how it works and what it all does. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you.